Hello everybody, welcome to Mystic Time Memos. I am your host, Mystic Ribbon. Alright, had to turn that down. Okay, so today I'm on PTS because I want to go over how to set up a Templar healer if you're new to Elder Scrolls Online. So let's say you bought the game, this is your first experience to ESO. First off, welcome. Second, we're going to go ahead, I'm going to um, raise the max level so we can go over a lot of the skills and the morphs in this video. All right, it's a little chubbier, <laughs> whatever. First off, you're going to ask yourself what races make good healers? Well, you have a lot of options and depending on those options, you would trait or pick up your monas accordingly. A really good strong healer um, for Templars or any healer is Argonian. Argonian gets a passive uh, in their skills, and, um, a skill passive that increases healing. So a very strong choice, though it lacks a lot of upfront max resources, uh, max pools. So that's one of the downsides to it in comparison, like, you know, you know, in comparison to the high elf. High Elves are really good for their upfront resources, though you would have to trade their jewelry later down the road to be able to sustain. But as far as resources, High Elves are very good for that. Bretons have excellent sustain and upfront magicka. Uh, so these guys are really, really good, but you would have to trade their jewelry later down the road for spell damage because in comparison to the high elf, that is what they're lacking. So these three races already are really good for healing. And then on top of it is also Khajiit. Now Khajiit is a great healer, but you have to go critical values to be able to get the most out of this race for its healing factor because it has critical healing modifier, thus being, you know, one of those races that you have to kind of like stat accordingly. It's very just one directional with the Khajiit. Though, if you do it right, they're excellent. Plus, if you want to switch it out to a Stam DPS, or go mag DPS because you adapt better than most races in that perspective. So, but let's say we, you know, we're going to go with, you know, any race. It doesn't matter which one you go with. Or even, I should say Dunmer too. Don't let me forget about the Dunmer. The Dunmer is in comparison to the High Elf. So you have one, two, three, four, and five different races that would make excellent healers in Elder Scrolls Online. You could potentially go with like an orc, though you have uh, a stamina pool. So, I mean, it would be one of those, you know, situations where you just like the race. You could pull it off, but, you know, it's very rare, very unseen. Just, I'm just giving a heads up. Uh, also, I'm just, just putting it out there. You're not typically going to see people, too many people go orc, but could there be, you know, some Orc Templar healers? There could be. So, you know, just... But I, my choices would be always Breton, High Elf, Argonian, Dunmer, or Khajiit. Those would be my preferences. And that's a large pool to pull from. So, let's just say we're going to go with the Breton. Right? Give it a name. Okay. And then we're going to go to the class and we're going to pick the Templar because that's what we're wanting to go with. Usually I don't care about anything like this, um, but we'll thin them out just a little bit. This a little bit. Okay. And then we just go to create. All right.
Now, it might seem overwhelming at first, especially if you're new to... Let's say you've played other MMOs, but you're new to healing in Elder Scrolls Online. There will be some basics that you're going to understand from healing from other MMOs, but if you're a first-time healer, don't feel overwhelmed. If you are anticipating this game to function like other MMOs when it comes to healing, there are some differences that you need to be aware of and in this video i hope to just cover that okay so the first thing i want to do this is just the basics is look at my skills right everything's always going to go into max magica and then when you're a low level put a little bit of that once you hit 50 put one or two um health glyphs on small pieces just to get that 20k and you'll be fine then later on you can stat with the max magica accordingly now since i went with the breton we're going to see that he gets 2000 max magica he gets spell resistance um and he gets magica recovery but here's the deal magica mastery reduces the magic cost of my abilities by seven percent across the board now, if you're going to go with a healer, when you're leveling, the first thing you want to do is get a restoration staff, right? You that's the that's the more important thing. Nothing else matters. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with an Overland set just to grab um, a restoration staff. Okay. Doesn't matter what I do, it's just as long as I get a weapon. Um, all right, and you can craft your own gear or have somebody craft your gear. Especially, you want training. Training is going to help you level up these skills faster. So take note. You definitely want to go ahead and grab that. So the first thing you're going to want is a restoration staff. Now your second staff at level 15, I want to say that you get your weapon swap. You want to get a Destro, uh, Destro Staff. Now, I'm partial to the Lightning for the off balance. Some people try to go Ice or Inferno. That's fine, but as a Templar, I don't apply minor vulnerability. And when you cast Wall of Elements, it has a chance to apply off balance, um, make the target off balance, thus applying the minor vulnerability uh, status. So. At that level, just get a Destro Staff, no matter which direction you decide to go. Okay, so we're going to be, you know, impartial here in this video. So now that we have our Resto Staff, the first thing also we want to do is slot our first three abilities. You always want to keep one ability from each of these three trees on your bar while you're leveling. So you can unlock these passives down the, down the road. It's very, very important. So you at least want, when you first level, to have these three abilities. Now you can go ahead and place them how you want to. That's the nice thing. You want to get accustomed to muscle memory. That's the most important aspect. Now that we have our three abilities, we'll start unlocking what? Restoration staff abilities. Now. The three most important, or I should say two most important, would be your Grand Healing and, of course, your Blessing of Protection. These are very, very important. Why? Because later on, when you morph Grand Healing into Healing Springs, it'll help you sustain your Magicka Pool as you're healing. Blessing of Protection is going to apply a Combat Prayer. Now, you can use Blessing of Restoration for PvP. This is pretty good in PvP uh, versus Combat Prayer, but you know, once again, it's a line of sight. It has a you know a box. So, but for PVE, we definitely want to go ahead and take the Combat Prayer because it's going to apply minor berserk and minor resolve, giving a buff, two buffs, an offensive and a defensive buff. Now, the problem becomes down the road your limitation on your bar space when you have a restoration staff because the weakest 
um, element for a Templar is Hots. So you'll want to take the regeneration, but the question of it is where to bar it. So I usually bar this here, and then you'll notice I have two spots. Well, I want to keep my Rush Ceremony in there because later on that becomes my one of my strongest heals, Breath of Life. So what I like to do is I like to take this ultimate for the slot. So I'm still getting that skill line leveled. And I like to keep the puncturing sweeps um, in there until I unlock spear shards. Once I unlock spear shards, then I go ahead and I replace that with the puncturing sweeps. And then when I level the um, this tree, I go for the backlash. And then I'll backbar this to purifying light right here. So you'll notice my ultimate's gonna stay here for some time until I level it up. Once I've unlocked these passives, then I am free to go ahead and unslot this. But let's say I need more healing and I want to use the Restoration Staff uh, Ultimate. I can put that on my Destruction Staff and then get the Remembrance until I can unlock my Warhorn. Now, Battlegrounds is the fastest way to, uh, um, to level up your assault and support. Yes, you can go in Cyrodiil and you can PvP at a low level. It's just in Battlegrounds, you're fighting other low level opponents and you gain XP at a very fast rate. So I always make the recommendation to go ahead and play low level Battlegrounds until you get to Assault 4 and then you can unlock your Warhorn and then you can go ahead replace the remembrance because the reason you want this ability and you'll be like why do i want a pvp ability as a healer well later on you're going to take aggressive warhorn this increases you and your parties max magic and max stamina by 10 percent thus the higher their stat pool the higher their damage it also applies the major force increasing your critical um Increasing your critical damage by 20, per, you and your allies' critical damage by 20% 20 for 20, uh, 10 seconds. So basically, you're giving a dual buff with this ultimate. And that's what a healer is, right? Healing and offering support uh, abilities. Then also, like I said, as on a destruction staff, you're going to go want to take your wall of elements and then i usually go with the unstable wall you can go with blockade for a wider but the hitbox as long as you can target it correctly the hitbox is appropriate now a lot of healers have to use weakness to elements to apply ele elemental drain what elemental drain does is apply my minor magic steel what minor magic steel does is restores magicka when you're damaging them so for you and your party every time they're damaging a target with this debuff on they're gaining resources but this is single target so i always have to go ahead and keep reapplying it to each individual target but the templar's strength is better than most healers in this perspective because they are going to go ahead get a restoring aura that later on gets put into a radiance which applies minor magic steel to all enemies and then while this is also slotted you'll get minor fortitude minor endurance minor intellect increasing your health stamina and your magic recovery by 15 percent so you'll have a better sustain while it's slotted and on top of it you have an aoe version of the minor magic steel so I would much rather utilize this on a Templar versus the Elemental Drain, okay? Another very important 
uh, ability that you want to focus in on unlocking, of course, is your cleansing ritual. Now you have two options here. You can go ahead and take Ritual of Retribution, which has a damaging effect. That's what I prefer. Or you can take the Extended Ritual, which incre increases how many uh, harmful effects can be cleansed in one application. So a lot of people go with the Extended, but sometimes I think it's overkill. So it's up to you. This is a preference call. You know, some situations you might need the Extended Ritual versus Ritual Retributions, but a little extra damage goes a long way, in my opinion, okay? So then you definitely want to also, that's pretty much the basics. Oh yes, and when you go ahead and you morph this, you wanna take the Luminous Shards because they're gonna get a lot of 3,960 Magicka. They're gonna get a little bit more on the recovery end. Now, also in the Undaunted passive, or, or the Undaunted abilities, I should say, sorry, you'll pick up uh, Neurotic Orbs, and then you can go with Energy Orbs. It has the same effect, basically, as your Shards, except it also has a healing of uh, Hot, a heal over time. Now, I don't utilize Energy Orbs and Shards at the same time because they blo both share the same global cooldown. I would rather much people get the bigger effect from the shards, but in situations that you need an extra hot, you definitely want to take advantage of that. Also in the restoration staff, when we take a look, uh, sorry, when we take a look at regeneration, I much prefer rapid regeneration on the Templar versus radiant regeneration. It's a bigger hot, ticks faster. Okay. And of course, if you get the Vatrain um, staff, you can use Force Siphon, though it applies the Magic Steel. And in my opinion, I much prefer the Dragon Star Arena Restoration Staff um, for the proc off the Healing Springs. Okay? So there are a lot of different preferences and options for you as a healer, but you definitely want to keep unlocking these passives and you want the basic abilities. So once we're, we've unlocked all of these passives, I also like to pick up really quick the barrier and support because once I unlock this, I can go with reviving barrier. I much use, rather use that than the remembrance because then I'm able to keep healing instead of channeling. That's my preference, but if you wanna use a remembrance, you can. Okay, plus then I get a passive. I get 10% magic recovery while it's slotted. You also want to take a focus into the Mage Guild because these passives are very important. Reduce the Magicka and health cost of your Mage's ability. But right here, Magicka Controller. Increase your max Magicka and Magicka recovery by 2% for each Mage's Guild ability slotted. And because we have a percentage scale morph to Mage Light, we would take inner light, we would slot that to the back bar, and eventually what we do is replace, put our, so since we're getting a scale factor, we keep our biggest heals on our restoration staff ability. Okay, so then we go ahead and put our breath of life here. And then on the lightning staff, we keep all of our utilities on this back end, okay? So we still keep the cleanse here, we keep the wall, we just put the shards where the orbs are. For our utility. And this is what it ends up looking like. Now, heavy attacks. It's important to do light attacks when you're DPS, but as a Templar you really want to take advantage of getting used to doing heavy attack weaves between your heels. Two reasons, uh, while you're weaving with the restoration staff, it heals. And then on top of it, when you do heavy attacks, you're getting, um, your fully charged heavy attacks restore 30% more Magicka. You get a way, a much more controlled way of managing your Magicka. And then on top of it, you're going to get major mending when you do a full 
charge, fully charge heavy attack. So when you're a healer, at any healer, you want to get used to throwing heavy attacks into the rotation, not just for resource management, but to also increase with major mending. I mean, I'm just giving you the habit of getting used to throwing heavy attacks as you're healing. Okay. But, and then of course is bar swapping. So one of the major things for me is throwing down the heal. I'll heavy attack and then I'll throw down the debuffs. Go in and then rinse and repeat and buff. And once that wall goes off, I reapply. So these are the basics you really want to get familiarized with if you're going to be a Templar healer in Elder Scrolls Online. I hope this tutorial helps you. I would like to thank you for watching. And as always, have a nice day.